astonishing new discovery. What the scientists found after sifting through dust of the, of the solar system. This is by NASA, March 12, 2019 article. Just as dust gathers in corners and along bookshelves in our homes, well, it seems that dust piles up in space as well. But when the dust settles in the solar system, it's often in rings. Several dust rings circle our sun. The rings trace the orbits of planets whose gravity tugs dust into the places around the sun as it drifts by on its way to the center of the solar system. The dust consists of crushed up remains from the formation of the solar system 4.6 billion years ago, rubble from asteroid collisions or crumbs from blazing comets. Dust is dispersed throughout the entire solar system, but it collects at grainy rings overlying the orbit of the Earth and Venus, rings that could be seen with telescopes on Earth. By studying the, this dust, what it's made of, where it comes from, and how it moves through space, scientists seek clues to understanding the birth of planets and the composition of all that we see in the solar system. Two recent studies report new discoveries of dust rings in the inner solar system, one study uses NASA data to outline evidence for the dust ring around the Sun at Mercury's orbit. A, a second study from NASA identifies the likely source of the dust ring at Venus's orbit. A group of never before detected asteroids co uh, orbiting with the planet. It's not every day that you get to discover something new in the new inner solar system. This is what Mark Kirchner, author of the Ven Venus study, and astrophysicist at NASA's Goodard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland says, it is right in our neighborhood. And another ring around the sun, Guillermo Stenberg and Russell Howard, both solar scientists at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, DC, did not set out to find dust rings. Quote, we found it by chance, end quote. Stenberg said, laughing, the scientists summarized their findings in a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal, November 21st, 2018. They describe evidence of the fine haze of cosmic dust over Mercury's orbit, forming a ring some 9.3 million miles wide. Mercury, 3,030 miles wide, just big enough for the continental United States to stretch across wades through this vast dust trail as it circles the sun. Ironically, the two scientists stumbled upon the dust ring while searching for evidence of a dust-free region close to the sun, and at some distance from the sun, according to a decades-old prediction, the star's mighty heat should evaporate dust, sweet being clean an entire stretch of space. Knowing where this boundary is can tell scientists about the composition of the dust itself and hint at low particles fomented, formed in the young solar system. Up to now, no evidence has been found of dust-free space, but that's partly because it would be difficult to detect from Earth. No matter how scientists look from Earth, all the dust in between us and the sun gets in the way, tricking them into thinking perhaps our sun, near, uh, perhaps space near the sun is dustier than it really is. Stenborg and Howard figured they could work around this problem by building a model based on pictures of interplanetary space from NASA stereo satellites, short for Solar and Terrestrial Relation Observation. Ultimately, the two wanted to test their new model in preparation for NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which is currently flying a highly elliptic orbit around the Sun, swinging closer and closer to the star over the next seven years. They wanted to apply their technique to the image Parker would send back to Earth and see how dust near the Sun behaves. Scientists have never worked with data uh, with collecting in, the, in this unexplored territory so close to the Sun. Models like Stenberg and Howard's provide crucial context for understanding Parker solar probe's observation, as well as hinting at what kind of space objects environment the spacecraft will find itself in, sooty or sparkly clean. Two kinds of lights show up in stereo images, light from the sun's blazing outer atmosphere called the corona, 
and light reflecting off all the dust floating through space. The sunlight reflected off this dust, which slowly, slowly orbits the sun, is about a hundred times brighter than coronal light. Quote, we're not really dust people, unquote, Howard said, who is also the lead scientist for the cameras on stereo and Parker solar probe that take pictures of the corona, the corona and the dust close to the sun just shows up in our observations and generally we have thrown it away. Solar scientists like Howard, who study solar activity for purposes such as forecasting imminent space weather, including giant explosions of solar material that the sun can sometimes send our way, have sent, spent years developing techniques to remove the effect of this dust. Only after removing light contamination from dust can they clearly see what the corona is doing. The two scientists build their model as a tool for others to get rid of the pesky dust in stereo, the dust, and eventually Parker solar probe images, but the detection of the dust-free space lingered in the back of their minds. If they could devise a way of separating the two kinds of light and isolate the dust shine, they could figure out how much dust was really there. Finding that all the light in an image came from the corona alone, for example, could indicate they'd found dust-free space at last. Mercury's dust, the ring of Mercury's dust, was a lucky find, a side discovery Stenberg and Howard made while they were working in their model. When they used their new technique on the stereo images, they noticed a pattern of enhanced brightness along Mercury's orbit, more dust, that is, in the light they'd otherwise planned to discard. Howard said it wasn't an isolated thing. All around the sun, regardless of the spacecraft's position, we could see the same 5% increase in dust brightness or density. That said, something was there, and it's something that extends all around the sun. Scientists never considered that a ring might exist along Mercury's orbit, which is maybe why it's gone undetected until now. Stenberg said people thought that Mercury, unlike Earth or Venus, is too small and too close to the sun to capture a dust ring. They expected the solar wind and magnetic forces from the sun would blow any excess dust at Mercury's orbit away. With an unexpected discovery and sensitive uh, new tool under the belt, the researchers are still interested in the dust-free zone as Parker Solar Probe continues its exploration of the corona, and their model can help others reveal any other dust bunnies lurking near the sun. Asteroids hiding in Venus's orbit? This is not the first time scientists found a dust ring in the inner solar system. 25 years ago, scientists discovered that Earth orbits the sun within a giant ring of dust. Others uncovered a similar ring near Venus's orbit, first using the archival data from the German-American Helios space probes in 2007, when the confirming and uh, then confirming it in 2013 with stereo data. Since then, scientists determined the dust ring in Earth's orbit comes largely, largely from the asteroid belt, the vast donut-shaped region between Mars and Jupiter, where most of the solar system's asteroids live. These rocky asteroids constantly crash against each other, sloughing dust that drifts beneath into the, the sun's gravity, unless Earth's gravity pulls the dust aside into our planet's orbit. At first, it seemed likely that Venus's dust ring formed like Earth's from dust produced elsewhere in the solar system, but when Goddard uh, astrophysicist Peter Pokorny modeled dust spiraling towards the sun and from uh, the asteroid belt, his simulations produced a ring that matched observations of Earth's ring but not Venus. This discrepancy made him wonder if not the asteroid belt, where else does the dust in Venus orbit come from? After a series of simulations, Pokorny and his research partner Mark Kirchner hypothesized that it comes from a group of never before undetected asteroids that orbit the Sun alongside Venus. And they published their work in the Astrophysical Journal letter yesterday, March 12, 2019. Quote, I think the most exciting thing about this result is a suggestion of a population, a new population of asteroids that probably holds clues to how the solar system formed. 
If Prokhorny and uh, Kirchner can observe them, this family of asteroids could shed light on Earth's and Venus's early histories. Viewing with the right tools, the asteroids could also unlock clues to the chemical diversity of the solar system. Because it's dispersed over a larger orbit, Venus's dust ring is much larger than the newly detected ring and Mercury's, about 16 million miles from top to bottom and 6 million miles wide, the ring is littered with dust whose larger grains are roughly the size of those in coarser sandpaper. So you can imagine how tiny they are. It's about 10% denser with dust than surrounding space. Still, it's diffuse, pack all the dust in the ring together, and you'll get all you get is an asteroid two miles across. Until a dozen different modeling tools to simulate just how dust moves around the solar system, Pocomi modeled all the dust sources you could think of, looking for a simulated Venus ring that matches the observations. The list of all the sources he tried sounds like a roll call of all the rocky objects in the solar system. Main belt asteroids, Oort cloud comets, Halley-type comets, Jupiter family comets, recent collisions in the asteroid belt. But none of them worked, Kutcher said, so we started making up our own sources of dust. Perhaps the two scientists thought the dust came from asteroids much closer to Venus than the asteroid belt. There could be a group of asteroids co-orbiting the Sun with Venus, meaning they share Venus's orbit but stay far away from the planet, often on the other side of the Sun. Pocomi and Kirchner reasoned a group of asteroids in Venus's orbit could have gone undetected until now because it's difficult to point Earth-bound telescopes in that direction so close to the Sun without light interference from the Sun. Co-orbiting asteroids are an example of what's called a resonance, an orbital pattern that locks different orbits together depending on how their gravitational influences meet. Pecorni and Kutchner modeled many potential resonance asteroids that circle the Sun twice for every three Venus orbits, for example, or nine times for Venus's ten, and one for one. All of the possibilities, one group alone, produced a realistic simulation of the Venus dust ring, a pack of asteroids that occupied Venus orbit, matching Venus trips around the Sun one for one. But the scientists could not just call it a day after finding a hypothetical solution that worked. Quote, we thought we discovered this population of asteroids, but then had to prove it and show it worked, end quote, Pocorny said. And he added, we got excited, but then you realize, oh, there's so much work to do. They need to show that the very existence of the asteroids makes sense in the solar system. It would be unlikely, they realized, that asteroids in these special solar orbits near Venus arrived there from somewhere else, like the asteroid belt. Their hypothesis would make more sense if the asteroids had been there since the very beginning of the solar system. The scientists built another model, this time starting with a throng of 10,000 asteroids neighboring Venus. They let the simulation run forward through 4.5 billion years of solar system history, incorporated all the gravitational effects from each of the planets. When the model reached present day, about 800 of their test asteroids survived the test of time. Pecorni considers that an optimistic survival rate. It indicates that asteroids could have formed near Venus orbit in the chaos of the early solar system, and some could remain there today, feeding the dust ring nearby. The next step is actually pinning down the observing and elusive asteroids. Quote, if there's something there, we should be able to find it, Pecorni said. Their existence could be verified with space-based telescopes like Hubble, or perhaps interplanetary space images similar to stereos. Then the scientists will have more questions to answer. How many of them are there, and how big are they? How they continuously are they continuously shedding dust, or was there just one breakup event? And what about the dust rings around other stars? The dust rings at Mercury and Venus Shepard are just a planet or two away. But scientists have spotted many other dust rings in distant star systems. Vast dust rings can be easier to spot than exoplanets. 
and can be used to infer the existence of otherwise hidden planets and even their orbital properties. But interpreting extrasolar dust rings is not straightforward. In order to model and accurately read the dust rings around the other stars, we first have to understand the physics of the dust in our own backyard, Kirchner said. By studying neighboring dust rings at Mercury, Venus, and Earth, where dust traces out the enduring effects of gravity in the solar system, scientists can develop techniques for reading between the dust rings both near and far. This by Lena Tran on NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Greenbelt, Maryland. And uh, this is Creative Commons, that's where you read it. Anything by NASA or USGS is Creative Commons. And so is the video. And I'll leave links below for you for this on nasa.gov, where the sign is found after sifting through dust in the solar system. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.